and I can't quit all this stuff before I get saved, then I'm going to come just as I am. They ought, to have, they ought to have a song with that kind of a name. I stepped out. I came down here. Listen, guys, I wasn't running from the hounds of hell. There were no tears coming down my eyes. I wasn't afraid of the flames. I was, I was thrilled that I could be saved. I was grinning, man. Listen, I was smiling so hard. That guy probably thought I was coming up to bite him. I looked like a 53 Buick. <clears throat> it was just, <laughs> I mean, and I came up here, brother, and I got down on my knees, and I trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. You know what happened? I got saved. Amen. I got saved from hell. I got saved from the heat. I got saved from the flame. I got saved from the torment. I got saved from the damnation. I got saved from the destitution. I got saved from the grief. I got saved. That is not all I got saved from. I got saved from something else. I got saved from religion. Do you know, do you, do you understand, have you thought about it, that there are going to be more religious people in hell than any other kind? I don't care if they are Africans out in the middle of nowhere who have never heard anything, who have been worshiping a tree. I don't care if they are college graduates in Canada who don't know any better, who are worshiping a tree. Huh. Anyway, um, <clears throat> there, I, somebody said this one time, there are going to be so many church members in hell, the feet will be sticking out the windows. And I'm telling you this morning, there is a place in hell for Catholics. That's not against Catholics. There's a place in hell for Methodists. There's a place in hell for Episcopalians. There's a big place in hell for Muslims. There's even a place in hell for Baptists. Now, it's probably over there all by itself because even there they won't fellowship with anybody else. <clears throat> Baptists, they may go to hell, but they'll keep their convictions. <laughs> But I'm going to tell you something, guys. You know what? You need to get out of religion. Now, I didn't say get out of church. I said you need to get out of religion because you can go to hell believing that being a Baptist will get you to heaven just as much as anybody else can think that their label is going to get them to heaven. We were, uh, we were down south, my wife and I, one time talking to this lady. We had just had two, two weeks of language school, so we was trying to communicate. Anyway, and... Um, uh, we're talking to her, telling her about our ministry, and she was just so excited. This young woman, she just, oh, she was just thought this was so great, hearing about our ministry. And so I just, you know, I mean, I'm down south. And down south in the United States, everybody has been saved three, four, five times. I describe them this way. They're all saved and gone to hell. And, and, um, and she's just so excited. So I said, I said, when did you get saved? She said, I was raised in church. Well, I think it's good to be raised in church. But that wasn't what I asked. She's raised in a Baptist church like this one. I said, boy, I'm glad you've been raised in church. I said, when did you get saved? She said, my dad's a deacon. And I thought, am I not asking what I think I'm asking? She thought her religion was going to get her to heaven, guys. She thought being a Baptist was going to get her to heaven. Too much religion. Uh, you know what I figured? Here's, how, here's why I left the Roman Catholic Church. At the end of 20 years in the Roman Catholic Church, by the way, let me help you with this. Have you ever had anybody tell you this? You knock on a door, you witness to them, and they go, I was born a Catholic, and I'll die a Catholic. Can I give you the answer? You're going to laugh. It's not a joke. The answer is this. Here's what I tell them. I said, no, you were born a baby. You were made a Catholic against your will shortly thereafter. Right? How many of you were Roman Catholics? Okay, I know how you got in. If you were born into a Roman Catholic family... While you were still a helpless baby, somebody held you. And now, come on, come on. Do we talk to babies? Sure. Goo goo. Da da. Uh oh. <clears throat> but you, you, don't, you don't really. I mean, you, you think somebody's going to pick up a baby and go, uh, so uh, what do you think of global warming? Are you concerned about the uh, hole in the ozone? I mean, nobody talks to a baby like serious. You know what they did when I was a baby, when you guys were babies? Somebody held you and said like they really meant business. Do you promise to be a, a, a loyal member of the Roman Catholic Church? They, when they asked me that as a baby, somebody else standing behind me said yes on my behalf. Wait just a second. I'm not sure I appreciate this. 
How would you like this? How would you like tomorrow some salesman pulls a Lincoln Town car into your driveway, gets out of it and says, there's your car. You now owe me $45,000. And you go, well, I never said I'm paying for that. And they said, no, Gip said you would. I don't appreciate somebody shackling me to a church when I can't even talk. Hey, for all you know, you Catholics uh, uh, that were Catholics, you might have filled your drawers when they asked you that question. I hope I did. <clears throat> so I tell people, you were, you were not born a Catholic. You were born a baby. You were made a Catholic against your will. And I said, when I grew up, when I found out I could leap, I left. This happened. I was sitting in an airport or someplace. I had to get on a plane. It was very short. And, and this, uh, I'm sitting next to this nine-year-old kid, 10-year-old kid, whatever, his little kid here, and I started witnessing to him. And, and you know, a lot of Catholics, even, even young, they don't know all the answers. They just think that if I say I'm a Catholic, it kind of inoculates you from the gospel. And he goes, he goes, I'm a Catholic. I said, are you? He said, yeah. I said, I was a Catholic too. Really? I said, yeah. I said, raising a Catholic family just like yours. He goes, really? I said, yeah. I said, can I tell you something? He said, what? I said, when I grew up, I escaped. <laughs> I said, keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. When you grow up, you can escape. He goes, yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't know how I'm hoping. I'm going to run into some guy up in heaven. And I'll say, how'd you get saved? So, well, this idiot was talking to me one day and told me I could escape the Catholic Church. When I grew up, I trusted Christ, and I escaped. Yeah. Hey, guys. I figured 20 years in a religion and the only thing I knew for sure was I was going to hell isn't a very good recommendation for a religion. I got out. I joined a, an independent King James Bible-believing Baptist church just like this one. You say, why? That's where I got saved. That's where I'm going to learn my Bible. That's going to help me most spiritually. But I got rid of religion. Maybe you need to get rid of religion. I don't know what it is. You know what I've appreciated that brother, brother Tyson has done? Believe it or not, I like Brother Tyson. That's not leading. I'm not setting you up. He's actually skipped a verse on some of the hymns. Oh, how sinful. I mean, I mean, Baptist, do we not make convictions out of everything? Now you've got to have convictions about singing every verse of here. Look, look, you want to sing every verse? verse? Sing every verse. Don't make it a doctrine. Well, these guys get up there, you know, and they will sing every verse, every verse. I mean, we're in some of those churches, my wife and I, and they, you know, you see there's like five verses, and I'm going, <laughs> and, you know, we're thinking, try a cardiac arrest. Try something. we got to get out of here. I say, you don't like those songs? I love them. I really do. I, you know, they get up and say, well, I'd sure hate to be the third verse of a song. You ain't even in a song, pal. But that's religion. That's religion. Hey, I got nothing against standing up when we read scripture, but some people make that a religion. You say, how do you know I've made it a religion? When you think you're better than somebody that doesn't. When you think that you're better than somebody that doesn't sing every verse of the hymn, when you think you're better than somebody that doesn't stand up every time they open up the Bible and read it, hey, you want to stand up and read when, you, when, when they read the scripture? Fine. When you make it a, a religion, that's a religious act. You're no different than anybody else. I got to tell you this, uh, this is just, this boggles my mind. This just stops me in my tracks, amazes me. Every now and then, someone will send us a check. That doesn't boggle me, I love it. <laughs> in fact, they said about this offering, if you wanted to specify it to us, that's fine. If you want to specify any preacher, go ahead and just put any preacher. And, and, and Brother Carlson said he wants you to put any preacher in Greek, which is G-I-P-P. -P. <clears throat> But anyway, um, um, somebody will send us a check. It'll be somebody like you, some, some person at church, likes our ministry, wants to help our ministry, wants to be part of our ministry. They send us a check and put a gospel track in it. They put a gospel track, nothing but a check and a gospel track. Now, can I ask you why on earth you're sending a gospel track to a guy that you're trying to help his ministry? Oh, I don't think for a second they think I'm saved, or that I'm not saved. You know what it is? That's their religion. If I said, hey, you sent us a check, how come you put a track in? They go, well, brother, I'll put a track in everything I send. Oh, well, stop. <laughs> I don't need it. Well, just pass it on. No, I throw it away. <laughs> Guys, I'm in a different town every week. Why would I be passing a track in Los Angeles from a church in New York? I got my own tracks with my own address. Still don't get any checks. 
But, um, <clears throat> but all I'm saying, you know, 